Oh, it's, I'm it's recording. Been your benefit more than anything, isn't it? Well, this, this might be my therapy. Okay. Um, all, right. all right. Does that mean I get to claim some sort of Medicare payment or something? It, it, yeah, I'm sure you can claim so, it. As a, as a provider of, of care? You can try to claim it. I'm not, not sure if the government will give it to you. I don't think I'm accredited. All right. Now, I'm with Trevor Evans again, obviously, because he's one of the few that talks to me. The topic would be the foreign relations bill that I mentioned last time about it. Now, we'll get back to the foreign relations bill because I want to talk about a bloke called Brendan Murphy. Now, apparently, he was in charge of trying to distribute this vaccine and he wasn't doing a real good job because he was replaced by a bloke called Commodore Eric Young. All right, now, you can check on this, whether you know about it or not, I don't know. Um, now, apparently, with a Commodore being in control of the dispense, you know, dispensing of this, uh, this vaccine, this unnecessary vaccine, in my opinion, um, now, wouldn't that, I think that would fall somewhere onto this foreign relations bill where he could get foreign troops to do this for him because there's no liability for him and people can't say no to anything under this military action. So to me, this this looks a bit like a it's, it's turning into a setup. I mean, why would you have a Commodore take control of a vaccine distribution? I mean, is that does that doesn't that openly say that the government is incompetent, that it needs military precision to do this? Uh, I, I can think of a lot of different tasks that the government has appointed task forces to do jobs and to coordinate. They were talking about the military. Logistics. Well, that's right. And so I'm thinking about, for instance, the flood recovery here in Brisbane after the 2011 floods. There was um, someone with a defence background put in charge of the flood recovery. Now, technically, you know, that wasn't that didn't mean that you know the army was running the show. But people that have been in charge of operations and defence are pretty good at logistical exercises and fulfilling complicated tasks. And that just means that personally, they've got a lot of the skill sets that you might need as a government trying to get things done. Basically, the skill, skill set would be how to delegate, isn't it? Um, Knowing someone else's skills well, and then if, delegating if, them if, to if the correct position. If leadership was so easy, everybody would be doing it. Well, I don't think it's that difficult, but... That's why I always encourage you to run for office, Ross. Well, again, I keep telling you, it's about finances. It's about the fact that it costs... to be in, Just to be an independent, they've upped the ante now. I think it's $2,000 to register as an independent. And then you've got to... To be a party, you've got to have 500 names that they check, and all they got to do is say that one name didn't correspond, and then they throw it out, and I've thrown away $500. So how do I how do I work how do I negate all that well, red tape? I mean, there's dozens and dozens of parties okay. out there that do manage it. I mean, lots of them have more than 500 members. So if even one of them says that no, no, I'm not a member anymore, or I never was, or there's been a mistake, they've got others that uh, can count for the for the 500 list and I guess you know this 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 brings us into the space of um, you know it's, it's not easy to be a politician it's not so, easy to be a leader there's lots of things you've got to do you've got to get out there and get supporters and convince people to back your cause well it's not about being a leader the, the concept that I keep addressing you to is that app that goes online where a lot of the responsibility you can throw it back to the people and say look I'll make the final decision, but I want to hear what you have to say, and I want to read your comments on this app that has no censorship like Facebook or YouTube. And then once you go through all their comments and the, the, the highlight the best ones and the worst ones and so on, then you can make an evaluated decision because you are literally, literally reading what people are, are wanting or sure, saying. Sure. But that happens every day now without an app like that. I mean, every single day I'd receive hundreds of emails, sometimes up to a thousand a day. And they're all on the issues of the day and sometimes they're on particular laws and proposals or ideas that there yeah, are but out there. That's, a, that's an email just to you. I'm talking about this sure. app where everyone can go onto it and it goes to parliament. It doesn't go to a politician, it goes to all of you. Yeah. And then you know what I, I get a the lot registered of Australians. Where every single politician is um, um, cc'd into it as well. What do you mean? Um, so I, I get emails every single day from people that have um, sent cc'd in all 151 members of the House of Reps. Oh, carbon copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Cc in, uh, in the cc field. Uh, yeah. Um, in okay. The email. So they send a lot of emails to the 
one email to a lot of different people because they put it in the CC. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I'm not big on emails. Sure. All right. I don't like receiving them. I don't send them that much. Yeah. I'm not a technical whiz of any kind. Um, that's why I'm having trouble getting this concept up and running. But everyone, a lot of people I talk to about this voting online app, whether it be a, I mean, nothing set in stone. You can have a, a survey on online first, and then once you start to secure the the borders of that app. Yeah. then you can put more security in there and, and then do more to it. Yeah. Um, it's not about jumping the highest hurdle straight up. You've always you, you've got to work your way up to it, don't you? Sure. Um, but yeah, that, that to me... What about this? There's a, there's a video I actually saw earlier today. It's called Planned Obsoles Ob Obsolescence. All right. This is the notion that some manufacturers of some goods design them to break down at a certain point in time, so you've got to go buy their next product. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. um, now, to me, and, and they showed cases of this and how the they the companies in the earlier days literally made cartels to make sure this happened because to make sure all the companies corresponded with that order yep. or that yep. agreement, shall we call it. Now, to me, that... That is a criminal action. That is a deliberate criminal action. And under Australian law, in some circumstances, it would be a criminal action here in Australia. Under as well. Australian law, under all circumstances, it should be a criminal action. Yeah, well, it comes down to proving that there's a cartel. But if there's a cartel in Australia, jail is one of the penalties that a judge can uh, apply. I think forfeiture of their company too should probably be part of it. I think some of the penalties involved in the um, competition and consumer laws involve fines which aren't capped. I think that they're multiples of the economic benefit that the company derived. So in other words, if you derived $100 from it, the fine could be 10 times that, whatever it was. So now, are you, are you happy we're not wearing face diapers anymore? very happy with the progress Australia is making, yes. Uh, see, to me when it comes to Labor, and not that I like Labor or Liberal any different to each other. Um, you hate us all equally, I understand. I'm an equal opportunity <laughs> hater, yeah. I, I don't like any of you as any good, but like some I might favour for certain reasons, but beside the point. Um, their handling of this virus is draconian at the, at, at, at the least is fascist at the most um, and they've handled it so poorly I mean if you look at shall we say some some states in America as, as examples Texas they, they they just said okay well no more lockdowns and everyone gets on with it and then you've got Florida who's I think it's no, Michigan sorry Michigan who's locking everyone down and their figures are going up up because people are getting locked down I don't know what the weather's like over there I'm sure the cold weather would facilitate this, this virus even though we're going into cold weather now they will be going into warmer weather because yeah. that's the way the hemisphere works yeah. um, so it, the science and there is points out there that shows governments and health officials that the lockdowns aren't needed so this mandatory face nappy and the mandatory you've got to you can only go five kilometers or one of them ages ago was you can only go five kilometers from home I think that was Victoria um, that is all basically control and and fascist control at that because the amount of YouTube videos I saw in the, the presentations I saw the police getting very very over over zealous with their heavy-handedness I think there are a couple of examples in Victoria which really made the headlines and um, which got a lot of traction in, in um, social media as well I, um, you know, the, the question of the face masks, um, you know, even someone uh, like Norman Swan, who was a commentator on the ABC the entire way through, at one point I think wrote an article saying that face masks didn't do anything and later on changed his mind. I think that and, and a whole lot of other measures, it's probably really only going to be possible in you know the weeks and months to come for countries well, to compare what again, they did and whether it worked. The American health... Uh, leader over there, Fauci, he did the same thing. He flipped and flopped on the masks. First he said, oh, you don't need them. Then he said, oh, you need one. Then he said, oh, you need two. And then he said, oh, you don't need them. And then he's gone back to two again. So it's, to me, putting putting a, a, a mask on your face, you're breathing in your own carbon monoxide again. So you're not getting a healthy ventilation to start with. 
um, and that's one of my issues. That's why I've got a, I've got an exemption for it because I can't wear a mask. It's, uh-huh. it just sends me insane. I think, um, I think it's fair to say it's just one more example of governments not having all of the answers and, and there not being a rule book about how to do something like this when it happened. Well, again, it comes back to if there was an app that all the people could go to and kick this ball around, because I'm pretty sure 18 million average Australians with a, uh, access to an app where they can all kick the ball around and, and you lot, as a bunch of pen pushing, you know, and not necessarily you personally, but a lot of them have got their heads stuck up their ass and they, they can't smell daisies from manure, that they can go onto that app and see what everyone's talking about and what their opinions are. And a lot of people actually get to post stuff on Facebook that comes from what, what they're calling is black sites, which are sites that are not Facebook or YouTube. They're calling them black sites, where to me, Facebook and YouTube is the black site because they're not letting the real argument happen. And that's, that to me is where you've got to have the argument to have all the bad blood vented so that you can see what's good, see what's bad, uh, clarify it, and then act on that information. Well, uh, a thought maybe on which to, to end uh, this episode. What if, Ross, what if, I'm just hypothesising, right. on an app sort of voting process like that, the majority of Australians said um, uh, we all need um, $1,000 of um, government support every fortnight by way of some you know, basic or universal income or welfare stream or something. And then the next week they also said, and all of us should pay zero taxes. What if they did stuff that didn't add up? Total. I think you'll find that judgments and so on are still required and that the world's a bit more complicated than just... Um, I didn't uh, say it wasn't complicated. Like that. There's a lot of things that are very complicated, but it's no good voting a bunch of people in who really don't know what they're doing. Like you said, there's no rule book for this. So they're all just making it up as they go. And it's looking very draconian and it's probably affecting more people. It's probably killed more people in suicide than the COVID actually has. Down in Victoria, we'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to measure these things over time. We will, and I guess, uh, you know, some of us go into this game very, very aware of the limitations of government and very aware of the fact that government's not all seeing and all knowing. And it's sort of one of the the philosophies that drive us in terms of our leadership decisions. Yeah, well, I still reckon that, that the figure that I heard was the 500 billion. And again, I mentioned this to you last time. Whether you put six, uh, nine, or, or twelve zeros in your billion. Now, every, every man, woman, and child could have gotten twenty thousand dollars in their pocket. Now, that would have stimulated, stimulated the like a lot of people probably would have sat on that twenty thousand because they didn't need it that much. But for the people who really did need it, that twenty thousand dollars would have gone straight back into the community. I think the average Australian who was on JobKeeper probably got more than that. Uh, maybe, but yeah. Anyway, it's how, how it's dispensed. Um, because I, I personally know pe- one person that. I'll, I'll just have to say quick. That's right. Hang on, Michael. I'll be. All right. I'll have to stop things there. All right. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Cheers. Okay.